In this video, I'm going to cover the software for the 4-channel receiver. And this is intended as a follow-on video from the construction video. And if you've not done so yet, I have a webpage dedicated for the project at rv-project.com and you can access that by following the link I'll present here. And if you've not done so yet, you need to set up your Arduino IDE. And this link goes to another webpage that I have that details how to do that. And essentially, you have to go to the Arduino website and download the IDE, which is an integrated development environment. I also recommend that if you've not updated your IDE in a while, you do so because some of the libraries may not be recognized with the older IDE software. It's free of charge. It's available for Macs, Linux, and PCs. And if you have difficulty, and my webpage doesn't cover everything, there are tons of videos online that you should be able to set this up with. The first thing you want to do for the software is you're going to have to download a couple libraries. And a library is basically, you can kind of think of it as a driver, but it does provide an interface to the hardware. We're going to need two libraries in this project. One is RC-Switch, and the other is U8x8. For example, to download the U8x8 library, we want to click on the download link. And that will bring up the GitHub source for that library. And there's a button here called Clone or Download. We want to click on that and download the zip. And then we want to save the file. And that's basically all there is to it. And we have to do that with RC Switch as well. And once we have the libraries downloaded, we want to go to the Arduino. And this is a little bit hard to show on a Mac, but I'll try to. And we want to go to Sketch, Include Library, Add Zip Library. And then we want to go to wherever we downloaded the libraries from. And with the Mac, it's usually in Downloads. And we look for RC Switch, and here it is, RC Switch Master.zip. We want to choose that, and that will install the library into the IDE. And if we want to verify it, we can go back to Sketch, back to Include Library, and scroll down. And you can't see it on the screen, but at the bottom, we see RC Switch. And then remember, we also have to do the same thing for the U8x8 library. And once you have the two libraries downloaded, you can also download the wikis, which are basically the instructions. And then we want to install a sketch. And the sketch actually has two files. And by the way, the sketch is basically the program. And we want to download the sketch. And this is from my website. Then we're prompted to save the file. And then once we have the file downloaded, we want to click on the file to unload it. And this is done on a Mac and your PC and even what version of PC you have may handle this a little differently. But we want to get this thing unzipped. And then we're going to go into our Arduino folder. And then we're just going to make a new folder. And we can call it anything we want. And then we want to go back to our downloads folder grab both files and then place them inside the folder we just made. So now when we go to open, then it tells us we need to save the sketch into an Arduino folder and we acknowledge that. And so it made another folder and we have to put this devices file in the same folder. So now if we open this again, and now you see we have the devices file here along with the four channel file. And the website really gives you a lot of information on how this works, but I just want to hit on a couple highlights. And the only changes that we should have to make is to this devices file. At the top, these are channel assignments. This is actually the received code from the transmitter that I want to map to the motor out function. And I'll demonstrate how you can get that. And this transmitter has four channels. So if I have to press one of the buttons, it gives me the actual number of the code that this transmitter sent. And if I try the awning dimmer, I get a different code. And there's a second method of doing that, and you're going to have to use this method if you don't have the monitor. With the receiver connected to the computer and the Arduino IDE running, we can click on the upper right-hand corner for the serial monitor, and we need to verify 9600 baud However, when we depress the transmitter button, we will get a printout. And that printout will have received data, that is the received code. 
And now to continue with our previous discussion, when we look at the definitions, we have the motor out, then we have dimmer one, dimmer two, and motor in. And these are the four codes that correspond to those four button presses on the remote. And then as we come down here, we do have a database, I'm going to call it. It's basically an array. And it has the transmitter code, and then it maps it to a function name. So if you're using the monitor in the receiver, whenever it finds a particular transmit code, it's going to put that into the display. So if you look back up here, there's something called device count, and 18 is the number of devices in here. So if you delete any or add any, you're going to want to make this device count equal to how many you have. Now you can change any one of these. You can put another code in here. Say the transmit code was 555-5555. And they're generally seven or eight characters. And then let's say this was lights. And you notice that these are all 16 characters. And there's different ways that I could have done this. But for now, I just made them so that it's easy for you to edit. And we upload this into our receiver. Then anytime that it receives this code, it's going to display lights. Now, if we also come up here, and for dimmer one, if we made that 555-5555, then it would actually turn the relay on for the dimmer. So that's how this thing works. These four codes turn the relay on when it receives that transmitter code. Down here, these codes simply display on the monitor what that function is. So since this, remember, is a distributed system, there are things in here that are not going to turn the relays on and off in the receiver. However, the receiver recognizes these, so anytime any function is transmitted, the receiver, if it knows the code, will tell you that, hey, somebody turned on the backup camera. In the main program, we have motor in, dimmer one, dimmer two, and motor out. And we can add more functions. The only restriction is that these things within these case statements have to be unique. Let's say we wanted to add another transmitter to turn on this dimmer. So we would simply copy that, paste it, and then we'll line it all up real nice. And remember I said that we can only have one. So we'll call this dimmer 1A. Then we need to go back to our devices and then say define, copy that again, and then make this number 1A as well. This code actually could be the same, but it is redundant. So let's say this code is six. So now either this transmit button or this transmit button will turn that dimmer on. Now the only issue here is the more items we have in this list, the slower it's going to get. So at some point, if it slows down too much, you may want to rethink having so many of them in here.